Hi, my name is Alex Radcliffe. And I'm right here today reviewing Cloaked Cats. Cloaked Cats is going to be a light deduction family weight game put out by Haba Games that ultimately involves trying to figure out whether you can figure out what your opponent's traits are of their cats before they figure out yours. Ricky, do you want to go into how to play the game? Uh-huh. The way you win is by getting the most points. The way you get points is by either being wrongly accused... Or? Or correctly accusing someone. And... You accuse someone on your turn. Would you how like to explain the overview? No, sure, but how, do, how does your turn play out? What do you do on your turn? First, you take one of your cards. No one knows what your cards are. These cards are all going to be different cats with different configurations of traits. So, for example, this cat over here is a black cat with stripes and that body shape. Versus this cat over here is going to be a pink cat with a champagne glass, no stripes, no spots, and the body shape over there. And so, on your turn, like you said, you're going to play out a cat. And then, so let's say I put this one down. Then anyone who has a, that trait puts one of their tokens down. So Do you have don't show Ricky this, but for instance, the cat Ricky just played is going to be a white cat with a champagne glass and that body and, shape. And, and if you look over here, I have that over there, which is, cover yours, cover yours, the white oh, trait. Spit. Okay, so that's going to be the white body type. In other words, because I share a trait with that cat, I'm going to take one of my masks over here and put it on the cat, which effectively tells Ricky that one of my traits is on that cat, although she doesn't know which one. And then, after they've done that, you can... Accuse someone. This is how you get points. Yep, so basically what you're going to so do is when you're accusing somebody... I could, uh, but people usually don't accuse people at the beginning of the game. What do you do? What do you want to wait for? More information. More information. So what's going to happen is on my turn, perhaps, maybe I put it, or let's say somebody else, let's say, grabs a card, they puts it out, they put out that, and sure enough, I'm not going to put out anything on that one. And so what's going to happen is Ricky's going to slowly look at the information that's gathering based on the, the both the cards that I put tokens out on, as well as the cards that I did not put tokens out on. So for example, let's just find a good relevant example here. That cat over there a second ago, let's say Ricky puts down this card next, which has a champagne glass. So when she puts that down... And I will proceed not to put down anything on it because I don't have any of those traits. So now Ricky knows that my cat is still either white or has that body shape, but she has eliminated champagne glass from the offerings because through the process of deductive reasoning or whatnot. At which point you can go through the accusation process. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example of a correct accusation and a wrong one. Okay, go ahead. I... Here's a correct accusation. Just go ahead and accuse me. Okay. You think I have... I accuse you of white. Oh, darn it. Yes, I do have white. So I'll take my, my, my card, my trait that is white in this case, put it down, and Ricky will get one of my masks indicating that she As has effectively point. earned a point for correctly accusing me. But an example of, one, of a wrong guess... Wait, wait, I'll do it, I'll do it. I believe that you have this body type. Nope. Oh. Oh my gosh. So again, I'll give Ricky a point. When you correctly accuse someone, you get a point from them. And when you incorrectly accuse them, you give them a point. So basically, those are the main ways you're going to get points in the game. The other way you get points in the game is... It's keeping all of your traits. Yeah, the game's going to end. Game end will trigger once any one player has all three of their traits ended, at which point you'll finish the round. So once all three traits are revealed, at which point, at the end of the game, you'll get points for the tokens you have from other players, as well as any of your traits that are unrevealed are each worth a point each. So a typical end score is in the range of what? what you, uh, three to um, five points, something like that? No, because we've got... We saw that, what, what, so I would say probably like a two to eight. Two to eight. Okay, so we have a two to eight is the range. It's a it's low a scoring, scoring game. Yeah, absolutely. And so that's going to be the main the main function of the game. Past that, you, each player is going to get a player aid that lists all of the available traits. Effectively, you have body shape, color, stripes or spots or plain, as well as the various accessories that they can have from balls of yarns to hats to mice to uh, champagne. Mar champagne or mar martinis. Or martinis or whatever it is. And so that's going to be the traits you have. And the absence of a trait could be a thing as well. So some, tra some cats will have neither stripes nor spots. Some cats will have no no accessories whatsoever. And that's basically the game. Putting down cards, taking a turn, put down a cards, take an accusation, rinse, repeat until game end is triggered, and see who wins. And that, that is going to be Cloak Cats. Did I forget anything? Um, no. Nope. Okay. So, Ricky, this is the part we do. What do you like about the game? I like the general theme, because I love cats. I like how all the artwork. Yeah. I like... I like how you are accusing everyone, and then you, 
and they get points with, with, that are in the form of masks. Mm -hmm. And they also like that there's curtains on every single card. Cool. So for myself, what I like about the game is going to be, first of all, I like the deductive aspect of the game. This game does have have reasoning and deduction as you play the game, meaning it's not a pure guessing game. It's a game that will have guesses or educational guesses to a certain degree, but also has logic. You can sit there and be like, well, if you have a token here and a token there, and you don't have a token there, je accuse yellow. Je accuse yellow. Do you have yellow? No. You don't have yellow. That's wrong. But anyways, <laughs> but the point is you, you sit there and you build up this deduction of the various tokens on the board to figure out what, what people have, which means it is giving an educational element of deduction to the game. I like how the game teaches in three minutes, plays in like 15, it plays pretty quickly. You get a knock, which I just said, played in 15. Uh, you get to knock out the game pretty quickly. I'm saying for the third time, but it has, <laughs> it has that, that quick play. You take a turn, put down a cat go through the sequence and just figure out. And it ends up having a lot of laughter. Like I know like we have a lot of fun going, je accuse, je accuse, je accuse. For some reason we've decided that uh, these cats look very French or something and we're just going with je accuse whatever trait we also think you fun. have. And, and, and it's fun. So overall it's a, it's a solid little package. Click to explain, click to play, giving you deductive reasoning in the actual game. So it's an actual, like there's another game which we'll be doing a review on later, so I won't cover any spoilers on. But mm -hmm. this is another game we have that also has the general notes or theme of the game, mm -hmm. but I don't quite like it as much because it's longer and doesn't have as many deductive aspects to the game. I like that the problem solving that Cloaked Cats gives you. Uh-oh, um, what's up? How would you rate the game uh, 1 out of 10? Oh, so I'd probably give this a 9, but before we get that, uh, we haven't covered what we don't like about the game. That's what we've covered first. So what do you not like about the game? Well, I kind of wish they had shields on both sides, because mm. when you're sitting at a certain place, you have to position it really, really carefully, and you don't know if people can see it or not. Yeah, we've definitely had uh, aspects where people could kind of get a glimpse of their traits, which can kind of effectively ruin the whole I'm round. I'm sitting in the same spot, so I had to orient it like this. Yeah, that's reasonable. Having a little more of a curvature or something around that would potentially help. Uh, for myself, there's going to be two things I don't like about the game. And the first is going to be that the nature of it being a deductive game with information that players can get wrong is especially if playing it with younger players. Because, I mean, you can, I've played this successfully with 5-year-old, 7-year-old, 9-year-old, and, and also with adults. Five. Well, semi-successfully with five, which we're getting to. So the problem is you can put down things on cards that is completely false information. So playing mm -hmm. with kids is great because it teaches them that deductive aspect, but it also means that they can put down things incorrectly. They can miss things, resulting in you incorrectly guessing or having com just being completely wrong straight out the, ga the gate. That hidden information aspect means it's both a game that is suitable for younger players but also could be played incorrectly with younger players. So that's going to be something to be mindful of. Doesn't stop me from liking the game at all, but just worth noting. And then for me, the second thing that I don't like as much about the game is while I really enjoy it, and we'll get to that with the scores, uh, I, I will say that it is a little bit repetitive. It is the same game every single time, and once you get a few games in, it's going to fall into the same sequencing of just knowing exactly what to do. Still enjoyable, don't get me wrong, but it certainly is repetitive, and that short playtime, while being a, a boon to the game in general is going to make it so that you can knock out six or seven games and you, it's it's repetitive and whatnot. Still happy to play it, but it's it's going to be the same game every single time to an extent. Um, I disagree with that. Okay, excellent. It's, I don't think it's repetitive because one game you can only get two points and the next game you can get a lot more. Yep. And sometimes you'll... And it always varies how many you have left. If you're good at keeping secrets, then you will, may have all of them. If you're not, then you will probably be the one that ends the game. Yeah, I, I, I understand. Okay, so scores. You want to know my score? So, my score for this game is going to be a 9 out of 10. And again, that's to be specific, that is in the category, the genre that it is performing. As a kid slash family game, I will say, by the way, just to be very clear, we've played this with, like, Ricky and three adults at the table. It's not, it's not just a kid's game. I wouldn't pull it out. I, myself, would be reluctant to pull it out with just adults. But as long as there's a kid and a reason to play, I will happily play this with adults because it's it's fun, quick, light filler game. Uh, the 9, the, the, the point deduction is going to be primarily because of, like I said, feels a little bit repetitive a little bit samey to myself if not to you and that's okay uh and past that in terms of my general score what i generally tend to say is do i do I, will i play it with kids will the kids enjoy it yes do i enjoy playing with kids absolutely would i play it with adults with no kids eh, probably not myself but you know i could see it being done it really is a light simple filler game and for you what's your score and final thoughts um i really think it's a 10 okay because the one the the one thing that I don't like about the game, we can just fix by making our own things at home to hold the cards in. 
that's reasonable. Any other final thoughts in general about the game? Where does this rank for you in other games? Um, it's definitely equal to Via Magica. Which was one of her favorite new games this year. Or last year, technically. Technically. Yeah. Anything else? Um, it's probably better than Chai, because it's a lot simpler. We haven't, we haven't reviewed Chai. No spoilers. Ignore that. Cut that. Strike that from the record. No spoilers about other games you haven't played yet. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so that's basically it. That would be our review of Cloaked Cats. It's a light, accessible game. It's from Haba. We do recommend it. Great to pick up. Good for younger kids. The box says seven to ninety nine in terms of age. We ignore the box. We went always. with, like I said, yeah, we always ignore the box. But we've played it with our five year old. And again, it, just to touch my point, even with our five year old, while the first two games were a bit of a mess, the third game he had picked it up and was playing it just fine. So that that younger kid thing. Expect a few learning games where you understand that things were done incorrectly. But from there, you can pick up and and play it correctly from there. So that's basically it. That would be uh, Cloaked Cats by Haba Games. One that we both recommend. That Ricky really, really loves. Yeah, Really loves, and and, and that would be our review of Cloak Cats. Any final words? Um, me, not really. But you, but you did forget to say how a younger child might put something incorrectly. Oh sure. So I mean, a few, in addition to just missing things, our, our our son one game kept on comparing the cats that were out to the cards in his hand instead of the traits that he had, and that completely confused him and led to a whole lot of information that made no sense whatsoever. He had all colors, <laughs> and he said he had a certain body shape. So. And Abbas t- told me to accuse me, accuse him, and I said, no, because cards. He keeps on looking at the cards. Yeah, he traits. literally said what traits he had, and Ricky refused to accuse him because she thought he was wrong, and also she was right. because I had that card. Oh, that helps. I didn't know that. Oh, that's why. Yeah. I told you that at the end of the game. Okay. That's going to be it. I'm Alex Radcliffe. And I'm Ricky. And have a good one.